In this video, we're going to look at how best to tackle AQA English Language, Paper 1, Question 2. We're going to do this by looking at a couple of student responses to a sample question. So remember, you can pause the video at any point if you need more time to read what's on screen. First, let's remind ourselves of how Question 2 will look in your exam booklet. You'll be given a section of the source text to focus on and asked to write about the author's use of language. You'll be given some bullet points to help stay on track, but remember these are just a guide, you don't have to write about everything included here. There are only eight marks for this question, so the examiner's not expecting an essay. You just have to pick out roughly three interesting bits of language or features of language and focus on those as clearly as you can. It's a good idea to recap on the three things the mark scheme is looking for. The use of the correct names for the features you pick out, examples of those features in the text, and a comment on effect. If you take a look at the mark scheme grid, you'll notice that to get into level 3, your terminology use needs to be accurate and your examples need to be correct. It's also important to note that level 3 asks for the effects of language rather than effect, which is level 2. If you work on three different features of language, even if you make a mistake or feel unsure on one of them, you still have a good chance at commenting on more than one effect clearly. Now, let's take a look at how student A planned this question. Student A has highlighted some interesting words and phrases here and made a note of what they're called using some of their key subject terminology, adjective and alliteration. Now let's take a look at how they've written up their answer. Press pause now to give yourself time to read it through and then press play again when you're ready. Student A has written quite a sensible response here. They've definitely thought about the kinds of language the writer has used and they do try to explain the effect of those choices. Their terminology and examples, such as the use of adjectives and alliteration, are correct too. An answer like this would probably meet all of the descriptors for level 2 and would most likely earn you the top of the level. But they've used adjective twice, so they don't really show a lot of knowledge here. They pick out alliteration, but their comments on effect perhaps don't answer the question in a way that's really clear or that shows they're thinking about the word atmosphere. Now, let's take a look at student B's plan and see how they've done things differently. Can you see the difference in how this student has planned for their answer? Here, student B isn't just thinking about language features, they're also thinking about the whole question that asks about atmosphere. They've picked out some features really thoughtfully, and you can see they've also noted down their own thoughts and questions. For example, they've noted that the sibilance of the repeated S sounds in silent, still, and soundlessly build an ominous atmosphere, and questioned if this is peaceful or disturbing. The thought they've put into the planning stage would have given them a lot more to go on when they came to write up their response. So, let's see how they did. Press pause now to give yourself time to read through their response, and press play again when you're ready. Spending more time thinking and planning has worked well for this student, and it may well have helped them write up their answer faster too. They found more interesting features and used more of a range of correct examples from across the extract. Making notes has helped them comment and analyse in more depth. Their development in the second paragraph in particular shows how one perceptive comment about the effect on the reader lifts them into the top level, and as a result, their answer would earn them a level four. To recap, you should think and plan a little more around the words and features you select to write about before writing up your response. Remember to ask yourself, what do I think? What do I feel? What do I imagine? Remember, your examiner is likely to reward an informed personal comment. We'll leave it there. Why not try this approach yourself with a practice question? Good luck.